What is a heat pump? That's a good question. A heat pump is kind of like a machine that can move heat from one place to another. Think about a bulldozer on a road covered in snow and a man with a blowtorch. One way to get rid of the snow is to melt all the snow with a blowtorch. It would take a really long time. The other way you can do it is drive your bulldozer down the road and push the snow off to the side. That's shifting the energy of heat by moving the heat away or moving the cool away in the snow. In the same way, a heat pump can absorb heat from the air and put it into water. Uh, another example of a heat pump is an air conditioner. It actually pumps heat out of a house and puts it outside. So when you measure a heat pump's efficiency, you look at how much energy you put in to run that motor to move the heat versus how much heat or cool it produces. In this particular case, we're going to talk about heat pumps for swimming pools. These two heat pumps here were installed on a swimming pool, which was quite large, about I think 70 or 80,000 litres. It's a, it's a fairly large domestic pool. And the two heat pumps are working in series, and these are actually running directly off solar power on an off-grid home. The reason we did it this way was it allowed us to heat the water even when it wasn't hot. If you try and heat water on a pool on a cloudy and cold day, you can't actually generate enough heat to make the water warm. Whereas a heat pump can actually work at temperatures down as low as zero degrees or even below, you can actually produce heat. So here's what happens, I'll take you through the cycle. We have a, a material in here, just called a refrigerant. Um, there are older style refrigerants which are particularly bad for the environment. The newer ones are much less so. So this is using the new technology refrigerant. We basically take the refrigerant and we blow air across it from outside. So we draw the air in through here, through these grills, and we evapor evaporate this refrigerant into a, into a gas because it evaporates in a phase change process, much like our phase change material you'll see in other videos. So when this material becomes a gas, we then take it somewhere else and we re-recompress re it with a motor. That's the compressor. So it pushes that gas down into a liquid again. Now, here's some ways you can think about it. When you were young, you ever pumped up a bike tire. When you're pumping, 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 your finger gets quite hot. You probably noticed that. That heat is caused by the compression of gas. If you compress enough, it actually makes a lot of heat. The same thing happens when you open up a barbecue bottle. If you open it up like this and all the gas thrust is out, you'll notice it gets frozen around the nozzle because that's the gas expanding. So as gas expands, it absorbs, it becomes very cold, and as gas is compressed, it becomes very hot. So what we're doing here is we're expanding the gas with the air coming through, so the exhaust air out of this would be very cold because you're expanding gas just like opening up a barbecue gas bottle. We blow air across it and we blow that cold air away. We don't want the cold air. It's called waste cool. Then we take that gas and we compress it somewhere else and run water past it while we compress it. As we compress it back into a liquid again, it releases an enormous amount of heat. And as we rush the water past it through these pipes, the water gets hot. That's a heat pump. The same thing happens in a refrigerator. If you fill the sides of the refrigerator with the new ones or the back with the older ones, the back gets quite hot and inside the refrigerator is cold. The same thing's happening right there. We're basically running a refrigerant through the inside the fridge. It's expanding to a gas, absorbing heat, keeping the food cold. We take it outside, we compress it, and it becomes hot, and then we run it through a radiator out the back and we waste the heat off. So that's waste heat. In this case, it's waste cool. That's just a heat pump in action. Typically, the efficiency of a heat pump um, can be about three to one. Uh, it can be even as much as six to one, depending on the weather. So the bigger the temperature difference between the air temperature and the desired temperature you're trying to reach, the lower the performance. So if, for example, it's five degrees in the morning and we're trying to get that pool up to 30 degrees, there's a 25 degree difference, it takes more energy to do that. If it's 23 degrees during the day, not very sunny, but the air's 23 and we're trying to get the pool to 30, it's only a seven degree difference. That means the efficiency is greater. This is measured as COP, coefficient of performance. It's a ratio between the energy in and the energy produced. So in this case here, these ones run up to about six to one. So one unit of energy in, six units of energy out. That's when the weather's pretty good. If the weather's poor and maybe it's five degrees, the coefficient of performance might drop to three to one or three and a half to one. So choosing a good heat pump with a good coefficient of performance that works inside the temperature range in the environment that you're putting it, it's very important. You probably wouldn't put this heat pump uh, on top of Mount Wellington in Tasmania and hope you heat your pool up because it's probably always going to be minus 10 degrees or minus five degrees, in which case the performance might be as low as one to one.
which means one unit of energy in, one unit of energy out, you might as well just put an element in there from a kettle and heat your pool up, because it wouldn't be efficient. So choosing the right heat pump for the right environment is important. If you want advice on heating your pool, uh, we can help you with that. Uh, additionally, you can do the same sort of thing for heating a hydronic tank, for heating up water, rather than burning gas. We don't really believe gas is a good fuel for heating homes anymore, now that we can do this with heat pumps. So to run the heat pumps, we use solar power, and the solar power produces electricity. That means the sun's energy is free. The heat pumping is producing heat at a four to one to six to one ratio. It's a very good use of solar power here swimming pool, and it can heat it all year round, as opposed to the black plastic pipes on your roof, which can only heat it when it's warm and sunny. So that's it for heat pumps and pools. Thank you very much.